Hey guys, welcome back to the Telecom Talk Show. Today we have with us Mr. Pranav Roach. He is the president at Hughes Communications Private Limited. So Pranav, I would like to kick off this conversation by asking you, you know, just to uh, help people understand who don't really understand right now, what is Satcom and why it is important for India. Uh, hi, uh, Tane, good morning, uh, and thanks for having me here. So just to give you a brief perspective, uh, you know, there's a lot of myth around uh, satellites and satcom, uh, primarily because, uh, you know, it's in outer space and it's not in the control of people and governments. So clearly, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, those myths are is uh, right in the middle of telecom infrastructure and is used on a daily basis for a variety of things. Just to give you an example is uh, when you typically go to an ATM today, for example, uh, it's likely that uh, the ATM is connected to the bank branch via satellite. Or when you go to a gas station to uh, fuel your car, uh, it's likely that uh, the gas station is linked back with the the, uh, the chain uh, on, a, on a satellite network where, where enterprises and companies get information uh, on uh, on their uh, you know uh, organization on their sales and on their vital data uh, on a, on a, on a, on a minute to minute basis so uh, satcom uh, is n- nothing nothing more than just uh, a medium or a technology uh, just as you know we are used to wireless mobility telephones uh, we used to fiber uh, satcom is another medium uh, just like uh, fiber or wireless for communication purposes for broadband applications today. Okay. So Pranav, like we have been hearing a lot about, you know, SATCOM sector wants the spectrum to be administratively allocated and be uh, 28 gigahertz of some spectrum to be reserved exclusively for uh, SATCOM services. Now, why is that so? And why is it really important that, uh, you know, administrative allocation happens and uh, are telecom operators wrong to basically ask uh, that it should be equally distributed or uh, when or an auction should be held for both the parties to you know acquire spectrum like what should we understand here yeah no i think that's a very good question and very relevant in today's time when this discussion about uh, spectrum and allocation is going on and obviously there are various ways to allocate resource uh, but we must understand that you know there are two uh, there are two competing uh, or two complementary technologies, uh, you know, that are involved over here. So one is we are used to mobile spectrum being auctioned for the reason that it's a limited resource and uh, the government would obviously want to realize the best value that they can and find the best user for that uh, spectrum. Now, unfortunately, that's physically or practically not possible in the satellite arena for the reason that the satellite technology works differently. Uh, is that in order to have the satellite spectrum available, you must have, first have the satellite. And for that, you must have an orbital slot. So when the orbital slot is uh, allocated by the ITU, the spectrum or the frequency comes along with that. So now if, if, if you take away, let's say you know, I have a satellite in a particular orbital slot, and I have certain uh, frequencies that have been allocated to me with that slot. Now I've already made an investment to that satellite. Uh, based on that uh, you know, allocation. Now, somebody cannot come and say that, oh, by the way, uh, this range of frequencies is going to be used by me. So there is clearly a, you know, a, a, a kind of a contradiction or, or, or a conflict you know, over there. And the other thing that's important to understand is that when you look at the, uh, the frequency allocations, so there is an international frequency allocation plan that is devised by the World Radio Congress uh, every two years or every three years. Based on the international frequency allocation plan, the national frequency allocation plan is developed. Now, if you look at the national frequency allocation plan, the band from 26 or gigahertz to about 40 gigahertz is reserved for systems as they know uh, for uh, you know uh, 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 satellite applications. Now, you know, I mean, eventually it's a prerogative of the government uh, to, you know, utilize the resource in the best possible way that they want. But there will be a lot of disruption around the whole thing in terms of procedural, in terms of uh, physical to uh, make these changes. Uh, so, because if you want to accommodate uh, somebody now, uh, 
contrary to what has already been uh, you know put in the framework then there, there, there will be a problem so i don't know how uh, how this will be resolved but i'm sure you know there are there are very smart people and they will find some some solution that's eventually best for everybody right thank you pranav so uh, my next question is you know we recently heard that a major us satcom company partnered with a private airline to provide in flight wifi services so pranav in the coming months uh, with uh, one web starlink and more such companies coming to india like would we see a uh, competition in that area as well like uh, these satcom companies partnering with airline yeah i mean you know uh, the uh, the uh, the sort of the uh, the flight uh, you know connectivity uh, is 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 a big application uh, increasingly you will find that uh, you know people uh, when they are on board uh, wish to remain connected uh, via email or you know uh, text or voice uh, Uh, internet uh, etc and so therefore uh, more and more airlines offer this as a, as a i think a complimentary feature now uh, but definitely as a paid feature so yeah i mean uh, you, i think you know with the opening up of the uh, skies uh, there will be a greater uh, greater competition and i think which is healthy which is only better so pranav according to you like what is the biggest and most relevant use case of a satcom service in india right now what would it be so i i, I think you know i mean the uh, biggest uh, sort of applicability or application will be in the broadband applications area and if you if you look at you know uh, the way we still i think 512 kbps whereas uh, globally uh, we talk about uh, tens uh, of uh, you know megabits uh, Uh, download speeds for uh, which is i mean technologically possible uh, now so therefore our threshold is still quite low even uh, given this low threshold our broadband penetration is also uh, uh, very small and uh, the uh, the one reason for this is the fact that uh, you know we kind of languished in the satellite connectivity because that is one area where satellite Uh, can very uh, in a ubiquitous manner and in a in a you know easy to and quick to deploy manner make uh, you know broadband available uh, all over the country so to give you an example is that uh, you know if you look at uh, mobile uh, telephony i mean we started with 2g then we came to 2.5g in the late 90s then we came to 3g in the early part of this uh, century then we came to 4g now we talk about 5g but in the satellite arena we are still stuck in the equivalent of 2g because ku band which was uh, then the standard uh, globally <coughs> was made, uh, available uh, or was allowed to be used uh, in india only around 99 and since then we have not not moved uh, one inch uh, further and there are various various applications and various uh, bands that are now available which are uh, you know which offer high, higher throughput which offer uh, you know better cost uh, you know uh, uh, effectiveness so all of that is not available and uh, so as such i think the arena where satcom uh, can have the biggest uh, sort of uh, impact uh, is uh, making available broadband applications in a ubiquitous manner and especially areas which are underserved or unserved uh, you know in in the country right prana so like it's very interesting that you say like the broadband application would be the uh, biggest and most relevant uh, use case for india but like as a consumer should i really be looking forward to you know terminals being set up near my house or at my house uh, will it be something that w- my basic question is will it be something that will be you know mostly utilized by enterprises satcom services or will it also be you know uh, directly offered to the consumers in india yeah i mean you know the reason uh, i think eventually uh, you know it will be and it should be utilized by everyone uh, i mean even even if it's used by enterprises uh, even then it is used by consumers so if a bank deploys a satellite uh, you know uh, network uh, to make uh, available uh, uh, services so eventually the consumers benefit or if uh, oil and gas company is utilizing that at the gas station the consumers benefit Uh, but i would say the consumer can benefit even directly on a like a you know uh, consumer to consumer application 
because <clears throat> right now the limitation is cost so you know with the with the uh, sort of uh, non availability of new standards and new technologies we are uh, you know uh, driving a car which was manufactured 30 years back uh, that will obviously give you the fuel efficiency and the mileage uh, that that was then uh, you know uh, available but in 30 years there is you know so much of innovation and uh, sort of uh, uh, improvement that's been made that you can get more efficiency so to give you an example is that on a per month per megabit basis if the cost uh, for the bandwidth is uh, $2000 uh, and and that's what we are, we are sort of you know using today on the new uh, standards it's down to like $200 so it's one tenth so immediately you know you, you can see that if you reduce the cost of anything by a, by a, by a, by not just 10 20% but by a factor of 10 or factor of you know greater than 10 then you can penetrate the market deeper and more and more people will then be uh, you know uh, be able to uh, utilize and enjoy the benefits of that uh, technology right so uh, pranam is the satcom something that will you know benefit telecom operators as well because uh, last year government allowed the telecom operators terrestrial network operators to you know uh, take uh, back and support from uh, sorry backhaul support from satcom companies so like is that the only area where telecom operators and uh, satcom companies can work together or there are more areas i mean, I, I that is definitely one 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 area where you know there is a complementary uh, or a complete complementing need uh, for uh, utilization of sat, uh, satellite uh, resource but other than that i mean uh, you know uh, the tele the telecom operators also do many various projects for connectivity of uh, you know uh, the uh, backward areas or unserved areas and you know uh, so that's another area where uh, satcom applications can be helpful because uh, for us the ease of deployment is pretty much similar to what it would be if i had to put a terminal in an animal point or in chenpat or in the middle of a jungle in assam or in uh, madhya pradesh in terms of uh, you know the ease uh, time and cost right. so uh, so pranav like uh, in like you mentioned that a cost is a limitation right now okay but over the long run uh, will satcom services ever be able to replace the normal the traditional broadband services that exist today i i mean you know i i, I never believe that there's one technology that will uh, sort of sort of prevail or <coughs> come to uh, prevail at any point in time uh, you know th- th- these are all technologies that have coexisted over time in fact if you look at mobile uh, telephony was born out of satellite uh, communications and uh, you know while today the mobile uh, coverage extends to roughly half the world's population so if you look at this roughly about 700 billion people on the planet uh, roughly half that population receives broadband connectivity on the mobile systems but now uh, it's is the accept, accepted truth that the balance 3 and 1/2 billion people will never be able to get broadband on the terrestrial system or is not economically feasible to take these systems to those locations just because of the way people live in less dense areas and that's uh, that's in arena where satellite will come and that's why you see all of these uh, all of these uh, investments and innovations that are taking place uh, to uh, to uh, access to provide access to people who are living in uh, these areas so there will always be a i mean a complementing uh, sort of a role each technology will play and to give you uh, an example it's like the uh, your uh, you know the transport sector is you have buses you have cars you have planes you have trains you have rickshaws so people will use you know for for depending on where they want to go if you want to go from your home to the market you might use the rickshaw or you might use the uber but if you want to go to the airport you might use the train if you want to go from the airport to bombay you might use a flight so depending on your cost and your time and you know so that, that's how it works okay so prana uh, like there are so many satellites that are going to be released in the low earth orbit uh, right so does it have an environmental effect and if yes then uh, sorry if it has is it negative or is it positive like does it uh, contribute yeah. to space waste 
No, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, definitely the number of satellites uh, in, in space is going to increase uh, tremendously uh, when all of these systems go. But I mean, there are there are obviously you know regulators and there there are uh, obviously people who have uh, you know thought through this whole uh, uh, sort of matter and uh, planned uh, for this in a way that it does not obviously interfere uh, or cause any environmental uh, degradation or uh, have any environmentally adverse impact. So these low Earth, I mean, if you see the geosatellites are about. Uh, you know, 36,000 kilometers in space. So they are really far, far out uh, to have any uh, real impact on Earth. And, uh, but when you look at uh, the, uh, the LEOs, uh, they are about, you know, a couple of thousand kilometers uh, or so, uh, you know, above the surface. So I, I think, you know, uh, technologically today where we are, where we have, you know, reusable rockets, you can go and uh, you can, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you have space stations and things like that. So there are ways to manage uh, all of this. So I don't think there should be any any concern on uh, on on that aspect that there will be an adverse impact on environment or for the earth. Okay, Pranav. So like that will be all from my side. Uh, thank you for joining in today. Like uh, to all the listeners who have been uh, watching this video or, or uh, listening it to on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please check out our YouTube channel and you can also check out our podcast on Google Podcasts and other platforms. So thank you for joining in today, Pranav. Uh, thanks for having me, Tanmay. It's a pleasure talking to you. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too.